Hello, today we're going to do another unboxing. This is for the brand new Phyrexia All Be One Commander deck. This is the Rebellion Horizon. Rising. So I'll just look at the box. We're going to take a look. Let's see what's inside. Out counters, which if you have dice, it kind of fills that purpose for it. But if you're a new player and you haven't bought anything else, and you're new to Commander, or just in general, it's a nice addition. But usually they aren't necessary a lot of the time. Usually these do get discarded because they are just cardboard after all. Like you also get a punch out Commander. Location where I guess you can put your commander on it. I don't really see a point to it. I guess it's just like a fun little thing you can do. Oh, here's my commander. Like, if your opponents know what your commander is, it doesn't really serve a lot. And then you get the box itself, it's actually already done for you, which is actually very nice. So, we've got some boxes where. Alright, let's see, we got a little. Card here, so let's see what we got. So we get a Sawblade Scamp and a Zuri Stalker of Spears. So these are both new cards from the self alternative art. This one's foil. That's very nice. And then we got another. These are both pretty cool. I actually like the art of these. And then we have I don't know what that is, kind of just an advertisement. They get the the good old life counter spinner. He's a little hard to do, but just keep track of your life total. You got the insert. Gives you a little bit of backstory about the character. And it gives you an idea how to play the deck. And then let's actually check out the deck itself. So first off we have Nayla Sun's Vanguard is your main commander card. So for two red, white, you get a free free legendary human rebel. Attacking creatures control of double strike whenever one or more tokens attacks a player. Exile top card of your library during any turn you attack with a token. You may play this card. So it's it's interesting. So the idea is that we make a lot of tokens, we have them swing, and our commander will give us a little bit of card value. And nice ability about this that you're not forced to play it that turn. It just has to be during a turn you attack of a token. So even if you just swing with a single like a 1 1 flyer or something. It'll trigger the ability, so it's an interesting theme, and it gives White Boros some card draw, which this kind of this color pairing tends to struggle with. Then we got Ordnay Sun's Glory, is another commander you can choose for free. Red, White, you got a Legendary Phoenix, Flying Lifelink Haste. Whenever it attacks, you get an experience counter. All of this again. Then create a 2 2 Red Rebel creature token that's tapped and attacking for each experience you have. And then you can tap 2 red and a white to tap and untapped rebel control to bring this from the graveyard to play tap so this kind of goes in a diff somewhat different direction rather than giving you card value it gives you a ton of tokens over the course of the game for every time you attack with this and also gives you itself a recursion ability which is pretty nice so you basically don't have to pay commander tax ever again and yeah that's a pretty cool idea so then we got Battle Screech. Two double white sorcery. It makes two one more white bird creature tokens go flying. And it has flashback, so we can un we can tap three of our tapped white creatures we control and cast this from the graveyard. The fact that flashback cost is doesn't cost any mana is pretty good. Because our deck has is gonna be filled with a ton of tokens. <coughs> then we have cut a deal. Two no white, it's a sorcery. Each opponent draws a card, but then you draw a card for each opponent who draws this way. It's an okay white draw. The problem is that it does give every one of your opponents a free card for basically nothing. 
but you will be drawing up to three cards which is still a pretty decent effect then you have generous gift it's basically beast within for white so two and a white it's an instant which you destroy a permanent and then replace it with an elephant it's a nice removal overall then we're gonna play and we have the gold knight commander free and a white we have a two two Human Cleric Soldier. Whenever an our creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gives all your creatures plus up one of the turns. So it's basically like a Valor of Archon on a creature. Not a bad ability in here. We're obviously going to make a lot of tokens, so that ability is going to come up. Then we have Intangible Verdict. For one of white, we get a champion. It gives all our creature tokens plus and plus one of Vigilance. It's a pretty useful fact. We're going to make a lot of tokens. Then we have Midnight Haunting. Two in a white, we have an instant which creates two 1-1 one, one, white creature tokens flying. It's a decent effect, especially at instant span, and that's what makes it pretty playable. Then we got a uh, Path to Exile. So for a single white, you get an instant lets you exile a creature, but then that's but then they go get to go find a basic land. This is a pretty good removal spell. As it's a really cheap, it's instant. And the downside is very minimal, since the Lacid base land is always going to be worse than what they had. Then we have Phantom General. Two, free and a white for a 2 free Spirit Soldier. Because all our creature tokens, plus and plus one, this is a pretty useful ability overall. Then we have Parvara of the Steel Legion. Two and a white, we got a Legendary Cat Soldier. So once your turn, creature tokens you control get plus one, plus four. And then we can pay free and a white to create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. Also has partner. I don't know if there's any partners in here, but that's pretty cool. It's a really good ability since it gives them a ton of toughness. It also gives them a little bit of a boost of attack. But the toughness boost allows your tokens to survive heavy hits. Then we have hate mirage. So for free and a red, we get a sorcery. You choose up to two target creatures you don't control. And then you get to make a token copy for each of them that have haste, but they are exiled at the end of the turn. So basically you get two temporary copies of your opponent's creatures. It's it's a pretty decent effect. So we got Horde Lane Outburst. One and double red for a sorcery that creates free 1-1 one, one goblin creature tokens. It's just a decent token generator by itself. Then we got the Loyal Apprentice. One and a red, a 2-1 human artificer with haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have your commander out, you get a 1-1 one, one color stop your creature token with flying. It also has haste for the turn. This is a really good token generator since you're going to watch your commander out anyway to get the extra card draw. But this just gives you a free body basically every turn as long as you have your commander. So yeah, that's a really good effect. Then we have the Boros Charm. So for a red and a white, we get an instant. Let's just choose one. We can do four damage to a player, Planeswalker. Give our stuff indestructible to one to turn, or give a creature double strike. These are all pretty useful abilities. They all have their own niches. I think the Pur of Indestructible, you're going you're making a go wide strategy, so it's gonna help a lot. Except you're born. Then we have heroic reinforcements. Two red, white, sorcery, Cree, two one one white soldier creature tokens. And then to one to turn, your creatures get plus plus one in haste. So that's a pretty useful boost, but the fact that it just makes two tokens by itself is, is decent. Then we have Rip Apart. So for red and white, we get a Cersei that lets us either deal free damage to a creature or planeswalker, or destroy an artifact or champion. It's like basically like a braid, but if it was Boros and it dealt damage to planeswalkers. So that's pretty useful, actually. It's a decent rules panel. Too bad it's not an instant. Then we have Arcane Signet. Two mana again, Artifact just lets us tap one mana of any Commander's color identity. This is coming like a Soul Ring card where it's basically in every Commander pre-con now. And I think it's a fantastic card for any Commander player to have. Then we got Boral Signet. So for two mana we get a Artifact lets us pay one and tap. Add a red and a white. This one, this Signet is actually one of the better ones because it's in a non-green deck and these colors aren't the best at ramp. White does have some ramp, but red doesn't, so it's really useful. Then with the commander spear, it's an artifact, lets us get one man of any color's identity, and then sacrifice the spear at any time to draw a card. The fact this is a, basically a free sacrifice with no cost is really useful. It's only in the game you can just use it as a mana rock, and then later in the game when there's zero board wipe gonna happen, or you need the extra card, 
You just sacrifice for free and draw an extra card. Then we have the Fell Honor Stone. Two mana artifact. It makes a man of any one of our opponent's lands can produce. It's a pretty decent effect. Decent mana rock overall. Especially in these colors. Then we have Mask of Memory. This is a two mana artifact equipment. And you equip for one. And whenever a creature deals common damage to a player, we could draw two and then discard one. It's a decent card draw effect, though it does have to hit face, so usually kind of put on a small token or something, but it's a useful effect. Then we have the Mind Stone, two mana artifact, lets us get a colorless, or we could pay one and tap, sacrifice the Mind Stone, draw a card. It's a pretty decent mana rock, I do like that sacrifice effect, and the fact this only costs two mana, where some mana rocks cost free. And then we got, of course, the Soul Ring. One mana artifact gives us two colorless. This is just one of the best commander cards in the format. It's probably the most iconic one as well. Then we have Soul Guide Lanterns. So if one mana get an artifact, here's the battlefield, exiles a card from a graveyard. And then we can tap and sacrifice it to exile each great opponent's graveyard. Or we can pay one and tap and sacrifice to draw a card. So either effect is really useful. As we can use it either as like a better Tormad's Crypt or just a free card draw. Then we have Talisman of Conviction. So this is a two mana artifact. It gives you could tap for a colorless. You can also tap for a red or a white, but it does do more damage to us. It's a versatile mana rock since we can get the color mana, or we can just use it for a generic mana overall. You have Boros Garrison, it's a bounce land, so it can tap for both the colors, comes to play tap, but we do for bounce a land we control and enters. It has some useful combos, we just just use as a decent mana ramp card. Then we have Buried Ruin. This land can tap for colors, or we can pay two and tap and sacrifice it to return an artifact from our graveyard to our hand. So that's pretty useful. Then we have Command Tower. So let's just tap for either a colors command right in, just a fantastic land in just about any deck. Then we have Forgotten Cave. This is a cycling land. So it comes to play tapped, can give us a red, but we can also pay a red and discard to draw a card. It's pretty useful since later in the game, if you don't need, you can just cycle it away. And then we have Clever Concealment. So for two and double wing and instant with Convoke, meaning that we can tap our creatures to help pay for this card's generic mana cost. One for each tap creature. And then any more of target non land cards you control phases out. So it's sort of like a Teferi's protection, but it can't protect our lands, but it can basically protect everything else. It's phase out is kind of a weird mechanic since it basically just treats as though it didn't leave the field but just doesn't exist. But it'll phase back in on your turn. It's a weird mechanic, you have to look at it. Then you have Glimmer Lenses. One in a one we get an artifact equipment. It has the effect for Mirrodin. So when it enters battlefield, you make a 2-2 red rebel and then attach it to it. So it's basically like the germ thing. And then we could pay one in a white and a, for the equip cost. And then one of our attacks and at least one of our creature attack, we take the draw card. Mono white card draw, it's pretty decent. They may have Kema's banner. So free and a white has the mirror for mirror to effect again. We can pay two in a white to equip, and then it gives plus and plus one for each creature control, so we can make a single big creature token. That's pretty useful. Then we have Staff of the Storyteller. So for one white, we get an artifact which when it enters the battlefield cre can create a wild one, one white spirit creature token with flying. And whenever we create a creature token, we put a story counter on this. And then we can pay one white and tap, remove a story counter from the staff and draw a card. This is actually a fantastic card in just about any token deck. Since it gives you card draw, for free basically for doing what your deck is trying to do. I think there's a good card in here and any token deck should play that. They have Gold Warden's Gambit. For six and double red. We have a sorcery which has affinity for artifacts. So for every artifact we control, it costs one generic less mana. And it gives us five two two red rebel creature tokens with haste. And then for each of those tokens we can put equipment on. So basically we get a bunch of tokens that can swing in with some equipment. It's a pretty decent token generator. So it could go down up to two mana, which is pretty insane. Then we have Hexplate Wall Breaker. Green double red for artifact equipment. Has the Formiridin effect again. It equips for free and a red, gives the good creature plus plus two. And whenever that creature attacks, if it's the first combat phase this turn, it gives you additional combat phase and also untaps your stuff. 
be able to get extra combat phase, especially with a deck like this, is pretty good. Since we get double triggers off of our commander. Then we have Roar of Resistance. For one in red, we have Enchantment, which gives all our creature tokens haste. And whenever one or more creatures attack, we can pay one in red. And it gives all our creatures attacking opponents or planeswalkers plus two plus one for the turn. I think the, the haste effect is really useful since most times when you make a token deck, they'll just you'll have a full board of tokens, but they can't swing. I mean, your opponent can just like pyroclasm or something, you're just dead. But this effect giving them haste is actually probably the better effect. The second effect is situational if you want to push for a lot of damage, but I think the first effect is what makes it good. Then we have Vulture's Factory. Two into red for an artifact. We can tap to add a red and then put a charge counter on this. And then we can make two into red and tap, sacrifice the factory to make an XX colors golem with haste for X more charge counters on this. So we can use this like a mana sink. And then later in the game, when it has a ton of counters on it, we can make a giant golem. Pretty useful. Then we have called the corporal coats. Two into white we get an instant which has strive which means for every target beyond the first you have to pay additional one to white for the effect you choose any number of opponents and you create that many x one white soldier creature tokens x number of creatures those opponents control usually you only need to target one opponent but being able to get a soldier for every creature on the board is pretty big and this can get out of hand very quickly then you have collective effort one in double white and a sorcery has escalate which allows us to tap one of our untapped creatures and then lets us choose another effect for each creature we tap so we can choose one or more destroy a creature power four or greater destroy an enchantment and portable scanner on each creature target player controls so the first two effects they're good they're decent i think that last effect is what's really good here given all our tokens plus and plus one can add just so much power to the board in an instant and the fact that it has the escalate ability and when you're playing a token deck allows us to really add a lot to the board then we have court of grace two and a double white we get enchantment whereas the battlefield you're the monarch at the beginning of your upkeep you get a one one white spirit creature token with flying if you're the monarch, you make a 4-4 White Angel with flying instead. So this is a decent token churner. Why the monarch, obviously, it's really good. When you're not the monarch, it's not as good, but it's still pretty decent. So you're getting 1-1 one, one flyers to block. And then we have Espit Elspeth Trio. So for free and double white, we get a legendary Elspeth with 4 loyalty. We get plus 2 her to give, gain 1 life for each creature we control. We can minus 2 her to make free 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. And then we can minus five her to destroy all of her permanents that are not lands or tokens. So all these effects are really useful. The life effect can get very big even with one activation. Game free soldier instance pretty useful. The ultimate is actually pretty nice. You can actually get in two turns. And most of the time it can nuke almost all of our opponent's boards and just leave us with a ton of tokens ready to swing for a game. Then we have the Irma Angel. Two and double white for an angel with flying. It's a free free. And landfall will give us a 1-1 one, one white bird. So this can, with flying. So yeah, it's pretty useful. It can give us some extra blockers. And landfall means you can trigger the ability a lot of times. We got another landfall coming here. Fell our retreat. Free and a white for enchantment. Landfall, we can choose one. We can either make a 2-2 two, two white cat beast token. Or we can put a scar on each creature we control and then give him vigilance to on a turn. Both of those effects are pretty good for us. Obviously, early in the game, you're going to make the tokens. Later in the game, you're just going to start putting counters on your guys and making them huge. Also, vigilance is really useful since it means if we go swing out, we don't have to worry about dying in the crackback. Then we have Finale of Glory. So for X and double white, we get a sorcery which gives us X22 two, two white soldier creature tokens with vigilance. If X is 10 or more, we also create that many 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. This is a decent token maker. If you're able to dump at least 10 mana, you're making 20 bodies. And it has a lot of power combined, so this can get very crazy. Then we have Flawless Maneuver, which costs 2 and a white for an instant. If we our commander, we could play his card for free and increase all of our creatures indestructible to a turn. Really useful ability and obviously a token deck and the fact this can be played for free 
means if your opponent thinks that they're about to just completely decimate you, you can just say, haha, here's my instant. Then we have Harmonious Archon. For four double white, we get a four five Archon with flying. It makes all non Archons free freeze, and whereas the battlefield makes two one one white human creature tokens. This is a fantastic card, as now is it making our opponent's creatures smaller since they're probably not Archons, it's not a very popular creature type. But most of the tokens in the game are pretty small, so it's going to make the majority of our creatures powerful. In addition, we're getting a couple of tokens when it's played, so it's really useful on all fronts. We have Our Reckoning. Four and triple life for a sorcery we convoke, and then destroys all non-token creatures. Really useful board wipe. Then we have Increase in Devotion. So for free and double white, we get a sorcery. It creates five one one white human creature tokens, but this was cast from the graveyard. We get ten of those instead, and it has flashback for seven and double white. This gives us a ton of tokens in an instant, and the flashback is a good ability. Next, we have Meet to the Valent, two and a white for an artifact equipment. It gives a creature plus plus one for each charge counter on this, and gains vigilance. One creature's value truly You put a charge counter on this, and they can quit for free. So. Yeah, this can make one token really huge. And this can get a lot of counters quickly since obviously we're playing the token. There's Mortal Coop. For X and double white, we get a sorcery. This is X home and white soldier creature tokens, but if X is five or more, we can destroy all other creatures. That's a really good board wipe effect while also making a ton of bodies. Then we have Model the Sky Cleaves. Two and a white for an artifact equipment when it's battlefield, it automatic attaches itself to a creature. Gives a plus two plus two flying to a first strike, and then we can paint two and double white to equip it to a creature. It's an okay effect in this deck. The fact that it has a free attach is pretty useful, but yeah. Then we have Mentor of the Meek. Two and a white for a two two human soldier. And when a dark creature power two or less enters battlefield you control, you can pay one and then draw a card. So yeah, this is a really good card in a token deck. Most of our creatures have either one or two power, so it just turns every token to a potential free card for us. It's a really good card in white. Next we have Silverwing Squadron. We're five and one and white. We get a an unknown power and toughness, human knight, flying vigilance, its statue, amount of creatures you control, and then whenever it attacks, you make that Marble of 2 2 white knight creature tokens of vigilance equals the number of opponents you have. Next up is White Sun Zenith for X and Triple Y. We have an instant. Let's just make two X 2 2 white cat creature tokens and then this goes into our library. This is a decent kind of like end game card to let's make a ton of tokens. This also goes back to the library so we can get this. A lot throughout the game, which is pretty nice. And then next, we have Chain Reaction. Two in a double run, we have a sorcery. This deals X damage to each creature, X number of creatures in the battlefield. It's a good board wipe. It's okay in this deck because most of the time you don't want to blow up your own tokens. So, this is kind of just a good board wipe in case you aren't doing that much, which can sometimes happen. Then we Dragon Ma Master Outcast. So, for single red, we got a 1 1. Human Shaman. If we have five, if we have six or more lands, we get to make a five-five dragon with flying. So early in the game, it's just a one-one, but later in the game, this will turn out five-five dragons for us, which it can start out like decent, but then it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Next we have Legion War Boss. Two in a red for a two-two Goblin Soldier. Has mentors. So one of her attacks, you can put a counter on another creature with less power. If you have upkeep your turn, you get a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token that has haste and it must attack this turn. So basically this lets you churn out tokens every turn that must attack. But the mentor ability allows you to make your smaller tokens bigger over time. And so we got a classic siege game commander for free and a dull red we get a 2-2 two, two goblin. There's a battlefield big free 1-1 one, one red goblins. And then we can pay 1 a red, sacrifice a goblin, siege game commander deals to your city target. So this, lets, so this lets us get a bunch of tokens on the field, and then we can use those tokens, or any goblin, to goblin in general, to start throwing a little bit of damage around, and it's really nice. Next we got 
Arande, Captain of the Guard, this could be your commander. Free red, why you got a 4 4 legendary human knight with melee. So basically, whatever attacks it gets, plus plus one, to one turn for each opponent you attack this combat, and then gives your other creatures melee. And then it notes that if creatures have multiple melee abilities, they each treat her separately. So basically, this, this base game makes all your creatures get plus plus one at minimum, but if you're getting extra combat stiffs, this can get extra buffs, which is really useful. Then we have Assemble the Legion. For free, red, white, we get an enchantment, which is being given upkeep. We put a muster counter on this card, and then make a 1 1 red and white soldier with haze for each muster count on this. So obviously, the first turn is just going to give you 1, then it's going to be 2, 3, 4. Eventually, it's going to start giving you a lot, but that's if it stays around long enough for it to happen. And we have Jorah Cannon, the Veil. This could also be your command. A lot of outside commanders, that's cool. So we got free, red, white for 5 4, legendary human warrior. The first strike it also has Metalcraft, so as long as you control free more artifacts, it gets plus 3, plus 0. Oh. So by itself, it's just a really solid unit. But if you're able to achieve that Metalcraft ability, he comes at 8 4 for a strike, which is very hard to beat in combat. I'm not sure how much the ability is going to come up here, but I guess it's a decent beater by itself. Then we got Idol of Oblivion. 2 mana for an artifact, which lets us tap to draw a card, but only if we create a creature token this turn. We can also pay 8 to tap Sacrifice Idol to create a 10 10 colors Eldrazi token. So this can be used as a card draw, and then we can just make a giant token out of nowhere. And we have the Luxon of Warhammer. Recost on artifact and equipment. It's going to equip for free, and it gives that creature plus 3 plus 0 and trample and lifelink. So this allows your little guys to become solid beaters that also have trample lifelink, so they can do damage and give you life, which is very useful. Next we have the Mirror Battle Spear. 7 costs 4 7 artifact mirror construct. Whereas the battlefield, you get 4 1 1 colors mirror tokens, and whatever attacks, you can untap X untap mirror control. And then to end the turn, the Battle Spear will get plus X plus 1 on the turn, and then deals X damage to a player or plays more good attacking. So this, can, this gives you a bunch of bodies, including a 4 7, which is pretty solid when it comes in. And when it's battling, lets you tap down your mirrors to give it extra attack while also for a little bit of damage to them initially. It's a pretty good card. For specifically mirror decks, but even by itself it's not bad. Next we have the Psalm Sir Malcolm. 4 cost 2-2 two, two, artifact golem. When it's the battlefield, we get search for a basic, put in a play tap, and then shuffle. Whenever it dies, draws cards. This is good in just about any deck. It's especially good in this deck since we are playing Boros, so it gives us access to some free ramp. Then we have Castle Arande Vel. So enters battlefield tap with control plane. We can tap for uh, a white, or we can pay two and double white and tap to create a one one white human. This is actually a pretty good ability, obviously, since we want to make tokens. And even by itself, we can make mana. Then we have Castle Emrith. For a land, comes play tap, let's control mountain, can tap for a red, or we can pay one and double red. And tap to give all our creatures plus one plus one one turn. Uh, it's okay, I guess. If you have a lot of creatures, this can be worth it. Otherwise, it's a very minor boost. Then we have Exotic Orchard. This is a land that can tap for any color of mana that our opponents can produce. We're playing two colors, so most likely we'll be able to get both colors. Sometimes we can only get one, but most of the time we can get both. Then we have Furry. No, no, no. Fury, Calm, Snarl. It's a land, as there's a battlefield, you can reveal a mountain or planes in your hand. But if you do not, it comes to play tap, and it can tap for either color. Which, it's a pretty decent two-colored land. Then we have Kiriki. This is a legendary colorless land, which can tap for our colors. Or, we could pay one a red and tap to make a 0-1 red cobalt creature token named Cobalt of Kiriki. This is a pretty interesting land, since it does, it can make... Cobalt by itself. Obviously, these cobalts don't really do much anything, but it does let us make a bunch of tokens, which is pretty useful. Slayer's Stronghold. This is a land can tap for our colorless, or we can pay 
red and a white, and then tap to give a creature plus two plus so, and vigilance and haste on the turn. Both of those abilities are pretty useful if we want to make a single token be able to swing right away, or one just for blocks that can be used for that as well. Then we have triple, Temple Triumph. It's a land comes play tap. Where's the battle food? You scry one, but it can tap for either color. It's basically the Temple Cycle. These are decent. They do give you a little bit of card value. And we have Windbrist Heights. This is a land. It's it's a highway land. So winners the battlefield. You look top four, exile one of them face down, and the rest goes to bottom light right order. This just comes late tap. You get to get a you can tap this for white, or you can pay white and tap to play the exile card of Alpine's mana cost if you attack with three more creatures this turn. Normally this is a little hard to achieve, but we are playing a token deck, so it's not going to be the hardest thing to do eventually, since we will usually have at least three tokens. Then we have Mirrored Landscape. This is a land that enters play tap. We can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two and tap, sacrifice it. Search for two basics with the same land type, put a play tap and shuffle. This is just a really solid lamp ramp card overall. And we have Path of Ancestry. This comes play tap. We can also tap it to add one man of any color of our commander's co identity. Well, this man is used to cast a creature with the, with the same creature type as your commander, which is Human Rebel, Scry 1. I'm not sure why this is in here. I guess there's a decent amount of humans in here. Rebel's not a very common creature type. There are some rebels in here. I guess it's just used as a decent mana rock, I guess. Then we have Secluded Stepney. This is the the white cycling land, so I just play tap. You can tap for a white, or you can pay a white to, to cycle it, so you discard it and then draw a new card. It's pretty useful later in the game. Next you have Temple of the False Gods. This is going to tap for two colors. But we can only do that if we have five more lands. This can be an okay land later in the game, but it doesn't really do anything earlier in the game. It literally just sits there doing nothing. And then we get some mountains. So we got 11 mountains. Just get 11 planes and then we get a very thick version of our commanders one of those hard ones yeah I'm, I don't know if you're supposed to play this as commander or not but I think it's just pretty cool and then we have some token cards obviously we have the monarch because of that one card we have our cobalt mirror soul red and white soldier uh, rebel bird human human soldier soldier and their soldier this one's vigilant in the back we have a golem, a dragon, a thopter, the eldrazi, goblin, cat, spirit, the elephant, angel, and then angel of visuals. So yeah, that's that's about it with this deck. It's an interesting theme and I, there's actually a deck I have that will really appreciate some of these cards. So anyway, that's the video. Bye bye.